Hi, my name is Victor Peretz from Autodesk and today I'm going to be explaining how to install CloudXR in a PC and how to get it running with Autodesk Spirit. What is CloudXR? CloudXR is a piece of software developed by NVIDIA and what it allows you is to connect the tablet with a computer and to have content streamed back to the tablet and then overlaid on the feed from the cameras. CloudXR can also be used with headsets such as MetaQuest 2 and the HTC Focus 3. Even though it has cloud in the name, it can be cloud or local based. In this case, for example, we are going to be doing a local based installation. So the data is just flowing from the PC to the router to the tablet via Wi-Fi. This is very powerful because there is a situation in which because of data protection issues, we don't want the data to be traveling through the internet and we want to keep it as protected as possible. For example, with automotive data. Talking about cloud, if you want to experience all the advantages of CloudXR and Vroid without the hassle of having to install it yourself, the new quick start partnership with Dawn with NVIDIA is now available. I'm going to be leaving a link on the description below if you're interested. And last but not least, if you're trying this at home, the new educational licenses are now available. So you don't have to have a work license at home. If you're just testing, you can just go and download the educational version for free and get to test Spirit at home. Only some considerations before you do all this setup. It's better to do it in a well-lit environment. CloudXR uses environment to track the movements, so the better it can see, the better it can track. Of course, having a lot of light is going to be better, otherwise the tablet is going to have to ramp up the ISO and the image quality will degrade. Of course, if you want realism, you will be needing a 360 HDR image, not an LDR and HDR image of the environment, so that the reflections and the lighting are as accurate as possible. If you're not using an environment of the place where you're positioning the 3D object in this case, it's going to look cartoony and not realistic. And finally, in this case, we are going to be doing the base setup, but you can use a QR code to position your model. We are not going to be doing the QR code setup in this video. I'll leave this for a future video. Another thing to take into account is that CloudXR can both work on Android as well as on iOS, so on iPads. When it's working on iOS, it will use the LiDAR. When it's doing it in Android, it's just going to be using the gyro and the camera sensors to track. The only drawback there is that the iOS version doesn't have QR code recognition built in. The QR code allows us to set a zero point based onto a QR code in the floor. And that is great when you're doing, for example, collaboration with more than one user because you can have a single zero point in the scene instead of having to place it manually. If you don't have a QR code, you will need to pinpoint a point on the grid, on the floor in this case, which is not going to be completely accurate and will make collaboration sessions difficult. The other thing to take into account is that to compile the application into iOS, you will need first a Mac, then Xcode, then an Apple developer account so that you can compile the application into the Mac. If you are using Android, you can just drag and drop the package and install it and it's already running. That's why we're going to be sticking to Android for the ease of getting it running. And finally, as I was saying, the tablet is going to be using the background to track. So it's better if you don't use it on reflective surfaces. So Matt is going to help you and it's going to be your friend in this case. Try to avoid having moving things on the background. So for example, if you are projecting over a screen, that's the worst case scenario. So you have reflective surfaces and if the background on the screen is moving, CloudXR will actually think that the world is moving. So the model will flip away. So try to avoid reflective or moving objects in the background. So what are we going to be needing? We're going to be needing a PC with a decently powered graphics card to run the graphics tasks. We're going to be needing a router to connect to the PC so that the data is then transmitted via Wi-Fi. The router has to be five gigahertz capable so that there's no bottleneck onto the data transmission pipeline. We're going to be needing a tablet. In this case, we're going to go with Android. So any Android tablet would do. Of course, the better the camera is, the better image quality you're going to be getting onto your CloudXR experience and we're going to be needing a CloudXR package. We're going to be downloading it from the NVIDIA webpage in a minute. And finally, we're going to be using SteamVR to connect VRED to CloudXR inside the PC. CloudXR will work out of the box in VRED Pro 
and with some light Python scripting in V-Rate Design and V-Rate Core. Okay, so the first step will be the installation. For this, you have to go to the NVIDIA webpage, developer access and register for an access for CloudXR. That way you can download the full package and then we can go on. So once you have gained access to the member area, you will be able to access and then download the package. As you can see, we have the Windows and Android download here. And once you download, this is what you're going to find. From the one side, you have the CloudXR setup file. If you go under sample Android and Google AR, you have the AR sample APK to be installed in the Android tablet. At the same time, we have the iOS CloudXR client that has to be compiled inside of Xcode. Second thing we are going to do is install Steam VR. To do this, just go to Steam, install Steam, and then, of course, install Steam VR on your computer. Once you have Steam VR installed, open the CloudXR package we just downloaded and install it. That, together with VRED, is all the software you will need on the computer. Once you have the files, you will have to connect the tablet via cable to the computer and access. And this is where you're going to have to drag and drop the APK in this case. And in case you're using the image anchor, so a QR code, you will have to drop the file here as well. Once you've done that, you can go to the files application, click to into internal storage and go to the APK. You will have to give permission to the application to install third-party applications. Once you've done that, you're good to go. As you can see, the application has already been installed and it's already opening. You will have to give permission for the camera as well as to record audio and to access the files on your tablet. So right now we are going to make the connection. We have the computer connected via cable to the router itself. We have the tablet that's connected to the Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz in this case. If you're using 2.4 gigahertz, there might be some delay and some jumping around of the image because of the bandwidth limitations of 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. First thing we are going to need is the IP of the computer. To do this, you can go to command and then click IP config. That way you can get the IP of the computer. We're going to insert it into the tablet. And the last thing you will have to do here is install Google Play services for augmented reality if it's the first time you install it on the tablet. So once it's open, it's going to try to create a grid on the floor. If you have a QR code enabled, this won't happen, it will be just looking for the QR code that you inserted. But as I was saying before, I will be covering this in a future video. So once you have the grid, you just have to touch a point of the grid. That point will be the zero point of your scene. So the zero point you have assigned onto the V-Red scene. Then once you have clicked there, the tablet will try to connect to the IP address that you gave it. If this connection happens successfully, a green CloudXR icon will appear into SteamVR. If a green icon doesn't appear, make sure that your PC is not domain joined. If it's in the domain of your company, there might be something in the firewall blocking it. Another step you can try is to ping the devices between them and also try to disable the firewall if you're working offline and seeing if it helps. Now we are going to launch VRED and as you can see, if we try to switch the view into OpenVR, that's what we need for CloudXR, it's not going to work until we connect an HMD. So it's going to be grayed out before. Once we make the connection with CloudXR, then you can select OpenVR. This is what you will see once CloudXR is started. The background is going to go black because the feed of the camera is composited inside of the tablet. So it's not coming back to the PC. And the last thing is once you've made a connection, you should be able to see the car somewhere. One thing that happens when you connect to OpenVR is it tries to estimate your position in the space. This is never 100% right. So what we recommend is to reset the position of the camera as you can see right here. You will find this script in the description. Just copy paste it into a variant set and click twice to reset the camera position. And last but not least, the cameras on the tablet and the camera on V-RED can have a different exposure. So if you want the most realism, we recommend playing with exposure until what you see on the tablet looks as real as possible.
As a recap, to follow this video you will need a VR capable PC connected via cable to a router and then an Android tablet connected via Wi-Fi. And as of software you will need Autodesk VRED, NVIDIA CloudXR in the tablet, NVIDIA CloudXR server in the PC and finally SteamVR. Remember that optionally you can also add a QR code to track the position and to set the zero point of the scene. This will be covered in a future video. So thanks a lot. I hope this tutorial video was useful. If you have any issues, don't hesitate to write in the comments below. Whatever you have, I'll try to help and just feel free to contact me and yeah, have a good one.